Good morning, everyone. It is September 13th, 2019, just about 4.45 in the morning. And today we are starting the test for the Bear Dynamic T1 second generation, a pair of headphones I've had for many, many months, and one that I really do like. And I like them because they're Bear Dynamic and they're not Bear Dynamic at the same time. And it's the whole part about not being Bear Dynamic is what makes me love these headphones as much as I do. We are going to break the uh, the test into three videos, the base, which is which is what we're going to do today, the mids test, and then the treble test, and then finally we're going to talk about overall conclusions, and then comparisons with other headphones in my lineup. Before we get to it, let's talk a little bit about the marketing. So Bear Dynamics says that because of the Tesla technology, the sound signature from these headphones is clear and undistorted and they say it lends the sound more substance and clarity i, I don't know what more substance means i understand what clarity means but it, sound, it lends the sound more substance is a vague term with absolutely no way to define or no definition they also say about the t1 that it has harmonic tuning the second generation of the T1 features an enhanced tuning with greater warmth and musicality. This exceptionally harmonic tuning is complemented by a carefully intensified bass, which gives fans of contemporary music in particular the low-frequency foundation that they are looking for. I don't know what musicality means, and I, and I don't know what intensified bass means. Does that mean it is an incredibly intense bassy headphone, or does it mean that it's got a slightly boosted bass? I that's a good question. Unfortunately, the marketing doesn't help. And then when you go all the way down on their website and you look at the product comparison, if you look at the T5P and the T1, both second generation, here is what Bear Dynamics says. So, so the difference between the two flagship, the T5P and the T1. Sound character for the T5P second gen. High frequency uh, reproduction or soft high frequency reproduction and powerful broadband low frequency reproduction very good spaciousness compared to the t1 second gen soft high frequency reproduction and powerful broadband low frequency reproduction so the only difference between the t1 and the t5p is one sounds more spacious i would assume that means more soundstage and the other doesn't and that is not helpful at all because it doesn't really tell you what the sound signature is these are 600 ohm headphones which means that they're very very hard to drive which is why i have them plugged in to my mass drop 789 at number three gain setting so the highest gain setting and currently the volume is about 10 o'clock no i'm sorry it's about uh eight o'clock so i missed it by two two o'clocks at uh, whatever and uh, I, that's plugged into the SMSL SU8 as a balanced stack. And we're going to listen to Spotify because that's the test playlist and because everybody has access to it. And because I have uh, 27 people looking at Spotify now. All right, let's get to it. We have four songs we're going to test today. Pure Water, Mountains, Drum Solo, and Lion by Kodo. So let's start with Pure Water. Here we go. I'm going to increase the volume so I can get a little bit more oomph out of it. Now the volume is about 11 o'clock. Now that, that bass is by no means intense. It's not tight. It's not... It's not of substance. You know... Bear Dynamics said in the marketing, uh, music with substance, I think. If we go up to the Tesla Technology info, lends the sound more substance. And I got to tell you, the bass does not have substance, quote. And the harmonic tuning, carefully intensified bass. I have to tell you, on Migo, or Pure Water by Migo, the bass the drum is not intense by any stretch of the imagination it sounds pretty light and it's not it's not loose bass but it's not particularly tight bass either 
So, you know, what, what Bear Dynamics says is that it, the bass is tuned for contemporary music. And what does contemporary music mean? Well, it means like stuff that we listen to all the time now, right? Rap music and pop music, things that re- that use uh, bass as a foundation. Like that, that's how they emphasize uh, the song, the lyrics. And I'm finding with Pure Water that, that it's not intense bass at all. It's fairly... F- I was going to say flat. It's not really flat, but it's it's not accentuated. And it's it it sounds almost anemic. It doesn't sound anemic to the sense that the L1000's bass is anemic, but it's very very soft even at 10 or 11 at on the volume. Now, if I increase the volume to say 1 o'clock, does that change the bass reproduction? Well, let's see. Okay, so the volume is at at one o'clock, and I'm going to keep playing the song. Here we go. At one o'clock, the bass tightens up, and it has slightly more emphasis, but it's not a big difference. So, here's the thing. Even though the, the, these headphones are hard to drive, and the more power you give them, the more you'll get out of the driver, the problem is that even between 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock, when you make that change from 10 or 11 to 1, you're putting more power, and you're using a very powerful amplifier, the headphone simply isn't providing that bass oomph. It's not uh, ear-shattering bass. It's not uh, headphone shaking bass. It's not anything like that. And I've heard Pure Water with other pairs of headphones, and I could tell you that the bass is like really, you know, emphasized. And if you if you have an opportunity, go listen to Pure Water using your, your whatever headphones that you prefer. And I suspect that you're going to find that that song's bass is very reverbery. It has a lot of reverberation. The T1 doesn't carry that reverberation. It doesn't present it. Okay, so let's go to Mountains by Hans Zimmer. I'm going to keep the volume at 11 o'clock. Here we go. I can hear the little sizzle in the background. I'm going to increase the volume to 1 o'clock. Volume is at 1 o'clock now. It's very soothing sound. I mean, it, it, it's not harsh at all. It's not peaky. Christopher Comstock, known professionally as Marshmallow, is an American electronic music producer. Do you hear that? DJ. That's. Should I keep going? That's uh, S I R I just decided to jump in. God, I hate Apple sometimes. Okay, so so the soft build up to the song is very smooth on these headphones. You know, you've got a little bit of the bass drum that that comes in intermittently, but it's not reverberate at all. There is not a big emphasis on that bass. In fact, that rolling bass feature around, say, I don't know, 55 seconds of this song, it comes in, you know, like a big bass. It doesn't really sound like a, a big bass. It just sounds pretty muted. And, and, it, and I'm not saying it sounded veiled or as if somebody's draping a bed cover over the drum head or anything like that. It just sounds muted. Like it's there's no emphasis on it. Let's skip to halfway. And now this is where the, the crescendo comes in. You have the organ, the drum, the string instruments. Right now. So that organ has this great, amazing umph, this big, huge uh, bass emphasis, and it drowns out everything else. But on the T1, it doesn't. In fact, it mutes the bass instrument, the organ frequency, when compared to everything else in the mix right now. I could hear all the other aspects of the, of the mix, 
and that organ is not drowning anything out. In fact, I would say the organ is all the way in the back somewhere instead of being up front and being the first instrument you hear. The organ is one of the second, third, or fourth instruments that you hear, and it's all the way in the back of the soundstage. So if you've ever listened to Mountains using any other pair of headphones, what you'll find around midway of this song is that when the organ comes in, it really just drowns everything out. Like, it's gone. Sometimes headphones that can't separate the music uh, or, the, or the instruments will just get distorted. It, you, all you hear is reverberation and that, and that harmonic distortion from the uh, organ. And all the other little pieces in all the other instruments in this mix will get lost. That's happened often. Then there are other headphones that present everything, but the, but the organ is emphasized above everything else, which means even though there's no distortion, the organ is just louder than everything else. And here I am sitting at 1 o'clock on the 789, and the T1s present the organ somewhere in the background, right? It's not, it's not the first billing. It's not the, it's not the star. It's not the thing that people are going to watch the movie for. It's just a background character, and it's somewhere in the, in, in, in the background, right? It just happens to walk into the frame. That's the way I would explain how the T1 is presenting this song. Now, that's not a bad thing, I mean, it's just, but this is a very different way of experiencing mountains than I have in probably most, if not any other headphone, which is the organ, the primary go-to thing is not the primary. It's playing second fiddle, essentially, if you want to say. It's an interesting um, dynamic. Now, you can say, what happens if you increase the volume? What if you go to 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock? And I would say that is very close to, to killing my ears, but I will increase the volume a little bit. Let's increase it to about 2 o'clock. Okay, so I've increased the volume to 2 o'clock, and I'm going to go back to midway, and let's see how the organ presents itself. Here we go. Yeah, at 2 o'clock, the organ is much more defined. It's still not a rumble, but it's louder for sure. You might probably hear the song right now through my headphones because it's as loud as it is. The interesting thing... I'm going to turn this off because it's really loud. So the interesting thing is... There, there are portions of the song where you can hear the, the low rumble, and it sounds like a rumble, but on the T1, it sounds more like a thunder, right? It's like a rolling thunder instead of just a rolling drum. And that's, you know, that's just a different way of presenting a particular sound or a different way of describing a particular sound. The other thing is that when you're really pushing these headphones, putting more and more power to them, turning, turning up the volume... It just, it, it starts getting tighter, right? It, it starts bringing out that driver more and more. It happened with uh, Pure Water. When we increased the volume, the things got a little bit better. With Mountains, we just did a test between 1 o'clock and about 2 o'clock. And just that little difference between the two presents something much tighter. And the bass response is more emphasized. Now, that doesn't mean that the organ is eviscerating everything else in the mix it's not it's still you can still hear everything else but the organ has more life to it it is in fact louder and you can start hearing some of that low rumble from the organ at that higher volume that i couldn't hear at the lower volume even though we're talking about between one o'clock and two o'clock on that knob so that's at least you can in fact get that low rumbly thing as you start pushing the headphones harder and harder and harder that's a problem, however, and the, and the problem is if you have to push the headphones and the drivers that hard, you have to pump in the volume, that means that you can't really enjoy the music the way you want at lower volumes. That means you're, you theoretically have to sit there with your powerful amplifier turned up to near max for your listening level 
in order to actually get all of that type of detail. And if you listen to it at a lower volume, you're getting, I don't want to say anemic bass, but it's certainly a much lighter bass than you would if you pumped more power and more volume into the headphone. Does that make sense? So, I mean, if, you, if you're the type that sits there and listens to music at a moderate volume, you may not really find the T1 to be to your liking. But if you are willing to, to listen to it at high volumes with a powerful amplifier, then I think you, you will start getting the benefits out of the, this particular technology and this type of tuning. Okay, so now let's go to Drum Solo by Jack Bruce and Simon Phillips. Uh, one of the things that happens with this song is that as you play, it's recorded live, so the audience is yelling and screaming, and, and it just gets ear piercy. So let's find out if that yelling and screaming of the audience starts piercing my ears, because Bear Dynamics says that it's got soft high end, right? The higher frequency are, are, is a little soft. Let's see how that is presented, and then let's talk about the bass reproduction. Here we go. So no ear piercingness whatsoever with the audience. It's very soft, even at one o'clock on the dial there. I could say that the drum sounds fairly natural to me. It's tight, it's fast, but at at this volume, at one o'clock on the 789, I can't hear the drum falling out of itself, right? Like, is that a boing, boing sound that sometimes comes with good pairs of headphones? I'm not hearing that. I'm just hearing the drum head being hit. And it sounds like there is something covering the drum head, you know, maybe a bed sheet or something to mute that drum strike. Now, let's increase the volume to about 2 o'clock and see what happens. And I'm going to let the song play and increase the volume. And I'm going to wait before I comment so that I can get an idea of what's going on with more power. So right now it's two o'clock, just shy of three o'clock. Okay. That was exceptionally loud. I assume you were able to hear it. So here's the thing. Uh, at 1 o'clock, it's kind of muted bass. At 2 o'clock, it gets a little a little bit tighter. And at 2 and a half and 3 o'clock, somewhere between there, it really just tightens up and it just comes to life. And the, and the, and the drum doesn't sound as if there's a bed cover over. It just starts being more visceral. Now, it's not the same visceral as the Atticus or the Odyssey XC. It's not that type of visceralness. It's simply a much more uh, fast and in-your-face drum response, bass response, than it was at the lower volumes. And this is consistent with the other two songs that we listened to, Pure Water and Mountains, that the more power you give these headphones, the higher you turn that volume, the better the driver actually does respond. And, and one of the things I have to point out is that the driver doesn't become distorted at that higher volume, at least not yet. And even when I'm almost at 3 o'clock, which is exceptionally loud, I can still hear the other instruments. I can still hear the crowd you know, screaming and yelling in the background. It's not really ear piercing, and it's just really loud, and that, and that bass frequency tightens up. It's like when you have your hand in front of you, right? You hold out your, hold out your hand in front of you and just, just kind of... Hold it out. Don't clench your fist. Don't do anything. Just kind of let it out. That's the type of bass you get with really loose headphones, right? They're, they're, the bass response is kind of loosey-goosey. It's not really doing anything. It's just kind of in there, and it's causing issues. It's just flopping everywhere. Now, curl your hand halfway into a fist, but don't clench it halfway into a fist, right? Now, that is the way that I would say, by analogy, is how the T1 presents a bass at lower volumes. Like, it's it's there, it's not loose, but it's not particularly tight, and it's not really a fist of bass. Now, clench your fist really tight, okay? That is, is basically how the T1 presents the bass once you put more power to the headphones and you increase the volume. Now, that is a fist of bass. 
that is is the way I would describe the base response. There's loosey goosey, that's not the T1. Then there's kind of a half fist at lower volumes, which is the T1. And then there's a fist of bass at at very high volumes with a lot of power going to the headphones, and that's also the T1. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's do the last song, which is Lion by Kodo. Let's start. And the volume is at one o'clock. I could hear that uh, middle drum right now and the big bass drum somewhere in the background. Now, we, right now, we have the faster drums and they sound really tight, really fast, very clear. There is no reverberation, lingering reverberation with the smaller drums. Now we have the middle drums come back in. They have a slightly longer reverberation. You can hear the different tonalities between the two. And the big rolling thundering bass drum should come in right about now. There it is. And I could hear that low, big low rumbly bass drum. I can hear the middle drum a little bit, but it's kind of melding with the big bigger drum. But I can definitely hear the smaller drum. Let's increase the volume. The volume is just shy of 3 o'clock. And at 3 o'clock, that smaller drum becomes visceral. It's really in my ears. Very pleasant, intense, fast drum. But that low rumbly bass drum still remains low and rumbly, undistorted, not interfering with the faster drum strikes. And, it, and, and I could say this. Let me bring down the volume and stop this. At that intense volume level at around 3 o'clock, it sound, like on this song, it sounds almost like you're sitting like two rows away from the stage. Because at that high volume, what happens with that bigger bass drum, the big thundering drum, is that it, it starts kind of, I wouldn't say it's distorting. I don't think it's really distorting, but it is in fact getting this, this crunching, noisy reverberation at the end. And that's not the accurate way to describe it. It's just how I can describe it right now at 5 o'clock in the morning, which is when you're sitting that close to a giant drum, if you've ever sat that close to a giant drum, well, here's what happens. You don't hear the detail, right? Because it's just such a big, huge drum, and that frequency just hits you when you're that close and you miss out on the detail. What what needs to happen is that you need to give room, some breath to that 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 noise, and the further back you sit, the more detail you'll be able to pick up because as the sound is propagating through the atmosphere, through the room, you know, it, the, some of that intensity bleeds off. And so now you get to pick out some of that detail. Now, there's a point at which in the room that you're just got you're not going to hear that detail because it's dissipated so much. But there is a there's actually a fulcrum. There is a point in the room where you sit and you hear all that detail and you still feel the bass impact. Sitting up front, second or first row, is not going to give you that, not on that type of instrument. So that's what I what I mean. Like it sounds like you're sitting at the f first or second row. You're missing out some of that that instrument uh, detail. And if you sat a little further back, you would get a little bit more of that detail. But sitting that close, you get a little bit more distortion and and um, kind of muddy feeling. But that's natural. So so. Don't think that that is me saying that the driver is muddying the music. It's not. It's just that's how the music is typically presented, depending on where you're sitting in a real concert, right? If you're listening to Kodo and you're sitting second row and this drum comes in, you will very likely feel like, oh my God, this is like way too much. This is, you know, all I hear is this, that's all I hear. But if you're sitting five seats, six seats, 10 seats back, you might go, wow, that's that's really nice, interesting sound signature. And because that, that sound has had time to dissipate and it's not hitting you, it's it's hitting you and then it's going past you. It's like you just happen to be one of the things that helps dissipate that, that frequency for everybody else who's enjoying it a lot more than you. Okay, so let's talk about conclusions. Here's what I got to say about conclusions. I think that the T1 is, it, it does it does the following really well. 
as far as the base test is concerned, no peakiness, no harshness, um, no graininess, no distortion, other than what we just talked about with with Lion. And the biggest takeaway is because these are 600 ohm headphones, and because they're using Tesla technology, it's a dynamic headphone, but it's Tesla uh, electric coil. What happens is that you need a really powerful amplifier and you need to turn it to a really high volume level, putting more and more power to it in order to really start enjoying the driver, to start enjoying the sound character of this headphone. At lower volumes, it sounds muted. It so The bass does. The bass sounds muted and it sounds really not quite defined. And if you're the type of person that doesn't listen to music at high volumes, or you're the type of person that has amplifiers that are, you know, run of the mill, run of the mill amplifiers, they're not the seven eight nine, they're not the seven eight eight from Monolith, um, they're not the Audio GD that has almost ten watts of power, you know, things like that, so, th amplifiers that have a lot of power to provide then you are likely not going to hear the benefits of this headphone. So let me give you an example. Let's say you went out and you bought the JDS Labs Element Amplifier DAC. You plug in the T1 and you listen to it. Are you going to hear the same type of sound as you would on a 789 at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock? Probably not. I mean, I have the 789 and we can do that test later. Or not the 789, I have the JDS Labs. We can do that test later. But chances are, because the, the JDS Labs is not as powerful as, say, the Audio GD or theoretically the 789, you are missing out on some of that detail that could be provided if you had more power to give to the headphones. That's number one. Number two, if you do not enjoy listening to music at high volumes, then you will not hear the benefit out of these drivers. That's... That's very clear. It was consistent with all four of the test songs that we listened to. That the more loud the headphones got, the more loud they became, the more detail that came out, the tighter the bass became, the more defined the bass became. And so if you're looking for a pair of headphones that has good bass and strong bass, the, the T1s I think will provide that. You know, maybe not with every song, Pure Water, it didn't really bring that out, but with the others it did, then you will likely have to listen to it at very loud volumes. And that's a decision you're going to have to make whether you're willing to do that or not. I hope this has been of some help. I hope that uh, anybody who's interested in buying the T1 will find that these videos are somewhat instructive and informative regarding what can and cannot be achieved by these headphones and with these headphones. I would like to thank all my patrons, all five of them. They are very generous individuals. Thank you so much for contributing, for donating some of your hard-earned money every month, once a month. If you are a viewer, subscriber of this channel and you like the content, then I'm hoping that maybe you will consider joining Patreon and donating to me a little bit every month. You see, a couple of bucks a month will help me out a whole lot. And because I buy my own stuff, I don't get hand-me-downs from other reviewers, I don't get uh, review units from uh, manufacturers, I can give you honest feedback and honest reviews about each and every one of my products. And that's what I would like to keep doing. So even just a little bit, a couple of bucks a month would go a long way to helping me keep this channel progressing. And I appreciate any contributions that you might be able to make. If you are a viewer but not a subscriber and you like the content, then hey, maybe you'll consider subscribing. And to all of my subscribers, we are well over 400 now. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for joining our little but growing community. I hope all of you have a wonderful Friday, because it is Friday, at least for me, and you enjoy your upcoming weekend. Take care.